Hey guys, Mr. Zigner, we're looking at Lesson 8-2, Measures of Central Tendency. Here you can see we'll be working on mean, median, and mode, and then choosing between mean, median, and mode, which one best describes the data. Here you can see we'll be uh, defining a few words, and of course describing sets of data using the mean, median, mode, and range. So what is the mean? The mean of the data is the sum of the data divided by the number of items. Here you can see in the example, there were eight numbers they added up, and then they divide by eight, ending them up with 2.75 as their mean, or average is the other word for mean. So here we're supposed to find the mean of this set of data. There's 15 students, and how many hours they sleep each night. Let's get started with this one. So let me add up my numbers. We have 7 plus 8 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. That's the first row. Plus 9 plus 5 plus 6 plus 2 sevens. Now the last row. 8 plus 6 plus 7 plus 2 eights. Okay, that equals 107. All right. So now what we do is we take that 107 and we need to divide it by 15 because there are 15 students who are asked. So divided by 15 and that gets us, there it is, that 7.13 repeating. So clearly, here's our answer, B, 7.13 hours. So again, you just add them up, divide by how many pieces of data you have and choose your correct answer. Now the median. The median is the middle number. And sometimes it's easy to find the middle number. You might have five high numbers, five low numbers, and then one in the middle. But sometimes you might have, in this case, two numbers in the middle. So what you do then is simply add them together and divide by two. Basically you find the mean of the two center numbers. Mode is the number that occurs most often. So clearly in this data set, there are two 45s and there are two 56s. So you can actually have two modes. You can have three or four modes, however many numbers appear most often. All right, so now we're figuring out the mean, median, and mode for these students at the middle school. And we're finding the mean, median, mode. Okay, so we have, let's see, we have 4, 8, 12, 16. I'm just counting how many people were surveyed. There are 16 numbers in that chart. Let's find our mean to start. So I'm going to skip the zeros. I'm just going to add the other numbers because adding zero won't change anything. So in the first row, I have 2 plus 1. In the second row, I have 1 plus Oh, I think I messed that up. Let's start over. 2 plus 1 plus, second row, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2. In the third row, I have a 1 and a 2. And in the last row, I have a 3, a 1, and a 2. Okay, so that equals 23. Now what I need to do is divide that 23 by 16 which is how many pieces of data we have. So 23 divided by 16, and there's our 1.4375. So there's our mean, also called the average. All right, well, what that means is it's definitely not D and it's definitely not A because our mean does round to 1.44. So, so far, either one of these look good because they both have the right mean. All right, so now it's time to figure out the median. Maybe that'll help us figure out the rest of this answer. So let's put these numbers in order. Well, how many zeros do I have? Looks like I have one, two, three, four, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five zeros. How many ones do I have? One, two, three, four. I have four ones. One, two, three, four. How many twos? One, two, three, four. Four twos. And threes. I've got one, two threes. 
and then I have that five. Okay, my numbers are now in order. Let's figure out, well, one thing we can figure out quickly, let's skip the median for a second. I'm gonna go right to the mode. Clearly, zero is our mode because it appeared five times. We only have four ones, we only have four twos, we have two threes, and we only have one five. So there we go. The mode is zero. It's, it's not five. So it looks like C is going to be our right answer, but let's just verify that the median is one. Now here's a little method I like to use. You're welcome to use it also if you like it. I start crossing off numbers from each end until I find the center. You just have to do that carefully. It's easy to mess it up if you're not being careful. So first I cross off the two outside numbers. Then I work my way inward. Cross off the next two. Again, I'm working my way towards the center. And we're almost there. Oh, there we go. I have two numbers in the middle. They're both ones. So clearly the median is indeed one. And that matches our answer choice C. So yep, C is definitely the right answer. All right, let's keep moving. The average weight in pounds of several breeds of dogs is listed. There they are. If the average weight of the golden retriever, 70, is added to the list, which of the statements would be true? Okay, so right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers, and we're supposed to add a seventh number. I think I'm going to put these in order first. So I have two 15s. Then what would come next? Looks like I have a 26. So I have my two 15s, then a 26, then a 30. A 45 and a 55. Okay. And now they want me to add on. I'm just going to draw a little line here, separating it for now. Add on to 70. All right. So let's start making our comparisons. First, A, the mode would increase if we add the 70. Is that true? Uh, no. Whether or not the 70 is there, the mode is still 15. So nope, it's not A. The mode doesn't change at all if we add a 70. B, the median would decrease. Okay, well, let's figure out the median before we add the 70 and then after we add the 70. So before we add the 70, what would the median be? Well, if I do my crossing off, but you know, I'm not gonna cross off the numbers. I'm just gonna make a little mark here. So cross that off, cross that off, and these two, and oh, okay. So I have two numbers in the middle, a 26 and a 30. So how do you figure out the median when you have two numbers in the middle? You add them together. So 26 plus 30 is 56. And then we divide that by two, and half of 56 is 28. So currently my median is 28. Okay, now, the question was in B, the me or rather the answer choice in B was the median would decrease. All right, now let's refigure out the median, this time with the 70. All right, so we use a different color here. So I'm gonna start crossing off again. So there's my outside numbers. Then my next one, the next two. Oh, and now it looks like I'm left with a 30 in the middle. So now the median is uh, 30. So the median did change, but is B the right answer? Let's see. B says the median would decrease. Uh, no, that's not true. The median increased, so it's not B. Oh, and look at choice C. The median would increase. There it is. It looks like that's our answer. The median did in indeed increase to 30 from 28. And finally, D, the mean would decrease. Is that true? Absolutely not. No. When you add a larger number to a set of data, the mean is going to not decrease, it's going to increase. If you add a small number, your mean would decrease. But when you add a big number like the 70, your mean is only going to increase, not decrease. Now this slide, you're asked in some questions, which one 
the mean, median, or mode describes the data best. Well, the mean is the best one when there's no outliers. The median is the best if there is outliers, but there's no gaps in the middle of the data. The mode is the best one if you have a whole bunch, a lot of identical numbers, and then they just mention what the range is. That describes the spread of the data. All right, so here we are. The line plot shows the number of siblings of each student in a particular classroom. Would the mean, median, or mode best represent the siblings? Let's actually figure those out so that we can determine which one's the best one. All right, so we have three zeros. That's just zero. I have one, two, three, four, five ones. So that's five. Plus, how many twos do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven two, so that's 14. How many threes do I have? One, two, three, four. Four threes, so that would be 12. And then I have one seven. Okay, so that adds up to uh, 38. Now, how many numbers do I actually have? I need to divide that into 38. Well, I have one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I'm going to divide that 38 by 20. Okay, 1.9. So 38 divided by 20 is indeed 1.9. All right, so my mean is 1.9. Now, what's my median? Well, that would be the number in the center. Let me try crossing numbers off to figure out my median. So I'm going to cross off one of my low numbers, one of my high numbers, another low one, another high one, another low, another high, another low, another high number, another low, another high, low, high, a low number, a high number, a low number, a high number. Oh, here we go. Cross off, cross off, and then I have two in the middle, but they're both twos. So the median is actually two. Wow, those are very close answers, mean and median. Now, what's the mode? Well, to see it better, let's cross, uh, rather erase these. Oh, yeah, there it is. Clearly, the mode is two. Wow, with three answers that are very close to each other, the mean, the median, and the mode, I'm going to say any of the three. I'm going to, right there. Since they're all close answers, I would say any. But if I were really pressed to pick, I would say the only one that I don't like is the mean. I know it's not off by much. And the reason I'm saying not the mean is because there is an outlier. And if we look back over here for mean, the mean is only good when there's no outliers. And right here, I think 7 is could be considered an outlier because it is far away from the rest of the data. So I think the median and mode are best, but truly any of them since all three answers ended up being so close. Well, that brings us to the end of our time. Thanks for listening to Measures of Central Tendency and Range, Lesson 8-2. My students should complete their questions on my webpage below this video. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.